I'm Phil Schapp. I'm here to tell you about jazz. And I'm, right now I'm telling you about some special people who first played the music down in New Orleans. King Oliver is the one I'm going to speak of now. Joe was his name. Joseph. But he's known as the King. King Oliver. He's a New Orleans pioneer. He was probably born in 1885. I know his birthday, May 11th. The year is a little bit dicey. And he started playing professionally in the early years of the 20th century. And he became the most favored player of New Orleans music in New Orleans when jazz was only played in New Orleans. He played that really potent lead in the New Orleans ensemble. And everybody wanted to have him in their band. That's really what King Oliver did in his New Orleans days. If you had a band, well, he was a star. You could hire him, and he'll help your band be better. And then came this magic moment when the music was first played outside of New Orleans. Jazz musicians from New Orleans started to go where supply was limited and demand might be even larger. I mean, this is the great migration of jazz music from New Orleans. Not that it wasn't still played in its hometown. But people like King Oliver, they shifted gears and they moved north. King Oliver was African American. He's really part of what's called the Great Migration, but he's also part of the Great Jazz Expansion. When King Oliver got to Chicago, which he did in 1918, he kept right on doing what he had done in New Orleans. You got a band? If you hire the king, you got the best band. I'm your guest star. And he did that for a couple of years. But the practices of the entertainment business in a larger city like Chicago and in the North in general and in the entertainment world more specifically sort of suggested to him that he should get a band together. And this he did towards the end of 1920. He called his band King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band. They're the most important early jazz band that I can name. And thankfully they recorded. That's important too. Because there aren't that many records of the earliest jazz. There's nothing before 1917, and there's precious little in 1918, 1920, 21, and 22. But on April 5th of 1923, King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band went to Richmond, Indiana. It's not really a short trip from Chicago. Look at your map. And they spent two days there playing music that would change everything. King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band made records that represented New Orleans jazz as it was initially played in the polyphony of the New Orleans trad jazz ensemble. And they played it optimized. But they also let loose the new configuration, the solo. King Oliver played three choruses of blues on Dippermouth Blues. And he also let Louis Armstrong, his protege, play some solos, like on Chimes Blues. And they had a clarinet player named Johnny Dodds he could make stuff up too. He could take what they used to call a Boston, a solo. So with King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band, you get jazz at its dawn from New Orleans, replete with a working band blessed with genius, delivering both contexts of the earliest jazz, all ensemble, polyphony, and the advent of the solo. And it might very well have been that King Oliver fellow this great man, this pioneer, this mentor to Louis, who's a genius in his own right, who said, take out the melody and replace it with going for yourself. 